Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and this little section of the um, shelf over here has, uh, has some of the things that I've used in the past to try to control insects. You got my diatomaceous earth up here on my shelf. I've also got my little fancy applicator for this stuff, my shaker, duster. <laughs> There's the uh, neem cake here that I've not really used very much lately, and uh, these are the most recent things that I've started trying to use. I've got a chunk of it over here and the other chunk of it I, um, I've got soaking down here in this bucket. It's these mosquito dunks. So I'm just uh, kind of experimenting with attempts at uh, controlling the insects. So the, the traces of the diatomaceous earth application you could see is the white powder here and there. In most cases though I've tried to sort of transition to the use of the mosquito dunks just pouring in and sprinkling in some of that uh, BTI solution to introduce that bacteria that controls the insect larva and I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should transition back to also including the diatomaceous earth kind of give them the one-two punch for whatever reason I've transitioned to just trying to use only one at a time whatever just be warned we'll see some flying insects here and there the system I want to check in on in this one right here it's a system that I decided a couple weeks ago when it hit its 200th day age to give it its last 20th feeding and then let it uh, enter foraging. But after two weeks it seems sensible to check in on it, see how it's coming along. Uh, you leave systems unattended, things can happen. Look at these little plants are growing. <laughs> Allowing for the material out here on the surface to dry. Luckily it's pretty damp. The system's pretty far along so those castings are going to hold their moisture pretty good. But I better check in on that. But first we're going to Check it on here and see how things are coming along. Let's get it up on the bench. Besides refreshing the BTI treatment that the system got last time, I'd also like to till up the material, help it air out a little bit. Gradually over the past few check-ins, we've definitely been observing the material getting better and better. We started out with this whole cinching in of the plastic cover a few feedings ago in response to observations we made about the material in here being possibly a little bit more damp than it needs to be. And then I think even last check-in we were already observing how it was becoming more crumbly. The nice texture. This is pretty cool. It looks like the worms are really coming up to the surface to feed at this point. Because, um, wait a second. Am I seeing things? Oh, I completely forgot. <laughs> Can you see this, um, you can see the corner pretty good here and perhaps over here too there's a corner of a piece of paper what we had resting out here a pretty good sized piece of cardboard had been laid down here two feedings ago with worm chow this stuff over here sprinkled across the top surface of it and it seemed like the stuff was getting all moldy and everything and then the last time we were in here the 200th feeding actually ended up being that piece of cardboard that was holding up pretty good, getting flipped over with the residual worm chow stuck to it, facing down at that point, and then a, a fresh layer of worm chow applied to the top of it. And they've completely eaten it. <laughs> they've completely eaten that piece of cardboard. That's so funny. I thought that I'd have something here. Well, if you count these little scraps as something, I thought I'd have something that I can kind of pour the BTI solution onto that would sort of hold it and soak it in as opposed to dampening what appears to be castings that are um, drying out pretty nicely I mean it does I don't know if we put in more paper to become sort of the sponge for the BTI then in a way we're kind of just adding more bedding not so much that we're feeding it again technically I haven't even reassigned this um, system in my spreadsheet my tracker as being in foraging yet it still shows as now being on day 214 of active composting but you know I did also sort of put a little shorthand marking in there that shows that that last feeding from 14 days ago was meant to be one that just becomes the last one for a while you know man look at all these beautiful castings scattered across the top I think we got all the cardboard bits and there's really not much. The other thing I was picking at earlier was some of this um, some of this tea bag. There's a couple of them floating around in here. I mean it does seem like they keep getting more worked. 
but I'm not sure if they're actually being eaten or what's really going on there, but what would account for it becoming or appearing to become less... What was the word? Threadbare? <laughs> yeah, it's... I don't know. It does appear as if it's sort of getting worked down, but I don't want to tear it into little bits, you know? If it's not going to break down, I'd prefer to, you know, see it remain as somewhat large, discernible objects that I could pluck out of here if I need to. So I'm becoming skeptical again. At one, at one point I was prepared to remove all those tea bags. Later I felt like I was observing somewhere and then I gave them a second chance. Every time I look at them now I get that sort of weird feeling like nothing's happening. <laughs> Alright, speaking of nothing happening, I'm getting nowhere fast with all this chit chat. But we pretty much cleaned up the surface of this whole system of all the residual bedding bits, and that includes the tea bags, which may or may not even end up being viable bedding or food for these little guys. Might have to get pulled out someday. It's the sort of thing that the screen would definitely capture. I don't think something like that would be able to pass through the screen, so not worry too much about it. At some point, it'll come out in the wash, so to speak. But I'm really here just to... Yeah, I want to just air the system up out a little bit, you know, aerate the material, help it along with the drying process. There's, um, there's a cocoon here, and there's probably a whole bunch of them. I'm pretty sure I already saw a number of them. I just really haven't um, focused on them. That one's got a pretty good, um, slightly darker color to it. The very, very new ones have sort of a, a greenish, almost looks like a little lime or something color to them. I don't know about this stuff here though it seems like I guess keeping it centralized in case it is what they need or they need some of it we can maybe just keep it sort of in the middle and maybe it'll result in a little bit of a worm ball for worms coming over for what little residual bedding slash food remains in here I don't think the foraging needs to go for very long in here because the material is pretty far down the road as far as the breakdown process the one thing that was mentioned during our last check-in was possibly using the 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 state of all the little um, leftover bits of leaf leaf stems. You know, all the all the leaves that I throw in here as bedding, each of them come in with their own little leaf stem, and they take a little while to break down, but they're a pretty good gauge for how far along your material is coming. And here and there, you see them. They're clearly here, but they're also so heavily worked already that they're not very strong. They just snap, you know, in your hands. So, And they're certainly not far from being completely broken down at this point. So I think I'm going to do something of a fairly disruptive till through here, you know. I'd like for all the really damp stuff that's down low, which is really not even that damp anymore. I'd like to kind of help that stuff up to the surface and submerge some of the stuff that's had some opportunity to dry out here on the top just kind of give the whole thing a a blending from a moisture perspective this stuff is really nice it squirms throughout it I can't say there's any particular concentrations of worms anywhere and that's I believe sort of to be expected if uh, if you've not been feeding anywhere I mean that feeding was a surface feeding and all the castings laid out across the top surface were evidence of where that last feeding had been. But usually we'll have like a, a, you know, sort of a trough into which we place our feedings regularly, keep coming back to the same spot. And um, there's really no signs of anything like that remaining in here. This is actually the bin, if, um, if you're not recognizing it, this is actually the bin in which we adopted for a while there um, this lasagna feeding pattern where it was sort of the stacked arrangement of bedding and foods and every time we'd come in here we would attempt to keep the whole thing nice and neatly organized in those layers but we abandoned that a little while ago and started steering it towards finish and this stuff is definitely getting there I don't think it would need a whole lot more drying to become really flowing to the point where you could probably run this stuff through a screen 
I don't think it would be successful today. I think it is still possibly a little too damp for that at this point, but it's not going to take much longer. And if we decide to possibly pull those edges of the plastic cover in even fur further from the edge than we had it previously, we could possibly um, promote even um, more rapid drying of this stuff. I don't know if I don't, you know, I'm always worried about trying to initiate those overnight sort of processes. I'd rather sort of see them get to the state that I want them in a little bit more gradually. Um, just seems a little bit more organic that way, less forced, I don't know. Yeah, here and there I'm definitely seeing little sticks and stems. Some of them are um, certainly larger than the stem of a a leaf. Some of them are sticks, definitely classify as sticks. Who knows, that thing I had in my hand, maybe it was even the uh, stem of a banana. <laughs> but one that's already been worked down so far we don't even recognize. It's hard to say. So there's certainly still stuff in here that the worms could be nibbling on. But it's dwindling, that's for sure. And hopefully, you know, they're sensing it. You know, they're probably sensing that the uh, um, uh, what used to be an abundance of food in this system constantly being on tap is um, not quite as abundant as it had been in the past. I don't know. Are they able to sense that? I would, I would have to guess they can because they adapt to those sort of circumstances by controlling their population numbers and things like that. Um, so I think we've done a pretty good job aerating the system and killing some time chit-chatting in the meantime. But there's really no reason to continue here. I think the only aim here is um, reached here by getting the whole system tilled up nicely. Gave us a really nice chance to inspect how everything's coming along. Even found one or two, uh, at least I think I found at least one more tea bag that I included in our collection. <laughs> I guess if I find any more bedding bits, I can keep trying to centralize them into our little collection down the middle. And that's really going to start becoming the only game in town, right? Maybe even these larger sticks and stems can get placed in there. I don't think that's a leftover banana stem. I think that's just a stick. All right, well, I'm going to get this thing covered up. What is this? Another tea bag? Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to get this thing covered up, but I think, uh, geez, where do we put the BTI? I've got a little, little bit of it over here on the side. So before we get things covered up here, I guess a little drizzle. Seems a little counterproductive in a way, but I think if we just spread it out, we're not going to be creating a big muddy mess down in our worm bin. At least I hope I'm not doing that. I think a little bit of this stuff, more is just a treatment of the beneficial bacteria. Is that beneficial from our perspective? Perhaps not beneficial from the perspective of breaking down kitchen scraps and household waste, but beneficial from the perspective of controlling the insect population in here. So, yeah, you know, I think I will just continue for now with the application of only the BTI. And um, who knows, if it starts to seem like a uh, it's not getting us anywhere. Maybe I'll bring back the, the diatomaceous earth, but that's a decision I'll make at a different point in the future. For now, I think we're done here. 214 days. 200 days at this point I will count as having been in the composting process, and now these last two weeks, 14 days foraging. And probably doesn't need a whole lot more. I think next time we come in here, it's going to be setting up a migration for these worms to start luring them out of their finished compost, into a nice new um, set of bedding and food with the objective of hauling them out and relocating them. So we're done here. Before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.